The college football season is flying by, and we're almost at the point where we turn to the college football playoff rankings. So, in a couple weeks, the AP poll is going to be long gone. After another hectic weekend of college football, here is my top 25 as we enter week 9 of the college football season. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are that you love college football, and odds are you are subscribed to my channel. So, make sure to subscribe it's one of the best college football communities here on youtube i'll be posting college football videos every day during the season so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video also make sure to drop a like on this video as well it helps out with that youtube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans Plus, it only takes a second to do. Staying at number one for me is Ohio State after they defeated Iowa 54 to 10. The crazy thing is, the Buckeyes offense only had 16 first downs and 350 yards of total offense. But thanks to Iowa's horrific offense, Ohio State's defense was able to capitalize. CJ Stroud threw for 300 yards and four touchdowns and had another fantastic showing as he continues to lead the Heisman race. Georgia was off this week, so I got them in number two. Tennessee stayed undefeated as as they took down UT Martin by more than 40 points. Hendon Hooker threw for 300 yards with three passing touchdowns, and as a team, the Vols rushed for over 200 yards with four rushing touchdowns. Tennessee is now 7-0 on the season, and they have a really difficult slate ahead of them. They play number 19 Kentucky next week, followed by number 1 Georgia on the road. Clemson was on upset watch for most of this game, but they pulled out the victory at the end to take down number 14 Syracuse 27-21. DJ Uyunglele had a pretty bad game as he was benched for Kate Klubnik, and ended up being the right move as Klubnik helped the Tigers pull out the come-from-behind victory. After trailing by 11 points at halftime, Clemson outscored the Orange 17-0 in the second half. Clemson is now 8-0 on the season, and this was their third-ranked victory of the year. Michigan was off this week, so here's where I have them. Following their loss last week to Tennessee, Alabama bounced back nicely as they defeated number 24 Mississippi State 30-6. This game should have been a shutout, but the Bulldogs scored a touchdown as time expired. Bryce Young threw for 250 yards with two passes passing touchdowns as the Alabama defense really limited this high-powered Mississippi State offense. TCU's magical run continues as they came from behind to take down number 17 Kansas State, defeating them by 10 points. It wasn't looking good early on as TCU trailed 28-10 midway through the second quarter, but the Horned Frogs were able to outscore the Wildcats 28-0 the rest of the way. Max Duggan had another fantastic game as he threw for 300 yards with three passing touchdowns. Kendra Miller added 150 yards on the ground with two rushing scores. TCU is the only undefeated team left in the Big 12, and they're number 7 in the country. Looking at the rest of their schedule, there's an actual shot that TCU can finish the season undefeated. Oregon continues to impress as they picked up their 6th straight victory, taking down number 9 UCLA 45-30. Ever since losing in Week 1 to Georgia, this Oregon Ducks team has looked like one of the better teams in all of college football. Bo Nix continues to have the best season of his career as he threw for five passing touchdowns with 300 yards. He also added 50 yards on the ground as well. As a team, the Ducks rushed for over 260 yards. Just like that, Oregon is back in the hunt for the Pac-12 title and all of a sudden has a realistic shot of reaching the playoff. After losing in overtime last week to TCU, Oklahoma State bounced back nicely, defeating number 20 Texas by 7 points. Oklahoma State actually trailed at the half, but they outscored the Longhorns 17-3 in the second half. Spencer Sanders threw for 400 yards with two passing touchdowns while adding 50 yards on the ground. I know I talked about TCU being in the driver's seat for the Big 12, but Oklahoma State is right behind them, and they still have a chance at reaching the college football playoff as well. Utah didn't play this week, so here's where I got them. USC also didn't play, so here's where we have them as well. Penn State bounced back nicely after last weekend's loss as they defeated Minnesota by 30 points. Sean Clifford threw for 300 yards with four passing touchdowns as the team rushed for two 200 yards with two rushing scores. The Penn State defense was able to hold Minnesota to only 17 points, including 16 first downs, two of 13 on third downs, and only 175 yards through the air. Although it's unlikely, Penn State still has a small shot of reaching the Big Ten title game. Wake Forest took care of business against Boston College as they defeated them 43-15. 
Sam Hartman had himself a day as he threw for 300 yards with five passing touchdowns. The defense for Wake Forest stepped up as they held Boston College to only 15 first downs and only 56 yards on the ground. Reaching the ACC title game for the second straight year doesn't look like it's going to happen for Wake Forest, but they still have a strong chance to win out and finish the season potentially in the playoff discussion. UCLA's winning streak came to an end as they fell to Oregon by 15 points. This was a close game entering the second quarter, but Oregon just put their foot on the gas and really put this game out of reach for the Bruins. Dorian Thompson Robinson still had a solid game as he accounted for more than 300 yards with three touchdowns. Zach Charbonnet had 150 yards on the ground with a rushing score as well. Overall, UCLA's offense did enough to win this game as they scored 30 points and had 450 yards of offense. The problem was that their defense allowed nearly 600 yards to Oregon and allowed them to score 45 points. It looked like Syracuse was going to pull off the upset, but they were outscored by 17 points in the second half, losing to Clemson. The Orange had three touchdowns at the half, but in the second half, their offense just couldn't get anything going. You got to give major props to Clemson's defense, but the Syracuse offense was essentially non-existent for the final two quarters. Illinois was off this week, so here's where I have them ranked. It looked like Ole Miss was going to pick up their eighth straight victory to start the season as they led 17-3 in the second quarter. But from that point on, they were outscored by LSU 42-3 in their 25-point loss. Ole Miss's defense had no answer for LSU as they allowed them to have 35 first downs, including 500 yards of total offense. One spot behind Ole Miss is the team they lost to in LSU. Jaden Daniels had probably the best game of his career as he threw for 250 yards with two passing touchdowns while adding 120 yards on the ground with three rushing scores. As I just mentioned, LSU outscored Ole Miss 42-3 from the second quarter on. After losing in heartbreak fashion in week one of the season, LSU has quietly won six of their last seven games. North Carolina was off this week, so here's where I got them ranked. Kentucky was also off this week, and here's where I got them ranked. Tulane continued their improbable start to the season as they picked up a win over Memphis to move to 7-1. Now, this was a game that they let get a little too close for comfort. They led 35-0 at the end of the half, but were outscored 28-3 in the second half but they were still able to hold on for a comfortable 10-point victory. Had it not been for a close 3-point loss earlier in the season, this would be a Tulane team that would be 8-0. It looked like Kansas State had a comfortable victory over TCU, but they were outscored 28-0 to close the game as they lost by 10 points. Adrian Martinez left the game with an injury as Will Howard came in to replace him. He was solid as he threw for 200 yards with two passing touchdowns while rushing in a touchdown as well. But this is a Kansas State defense that completely collapsed in the second half and an offense that was non-existent. Cincinnati picked up the close two-point victory over SMU. This was a game that looked like it was out of reach, but SMU came back in the fourth quarter. It wasn't a fantastic win for Cincinnati, as they only had 16 first downs and only 350 yards of total offense. But a win is a win, and they're now 6-1 on the season. Out of nowhere has come South Carolina, who has now won four consecutive games and is 5-2 on the season. They took care of Texas A&M as they defeated them 30-24. Spencer Rattler threw for 170 yards and didn't have a passing touchdown, but it was the rushing game that was able to provide most of the offense. They had three rushing scores on the ground. The defense stepped up big as well as they forced two costly turnovers from the Aggies. I must say, this is quite the turnaround for South Carolina as they looked like they were dead in the water through the first three weeks of the season. Wrapping up the top 25 is Oregon State, who picked up a 42-9 victory over Colorado. The Beavers are now 6-2 on the season, and they still have a shot of reaching the Pac-12 title game. It was quite the offensive performance from the Beavers as they had nearly 30 first downs, went 7 for 11 on third down attempts, and had 500 yards of total offense. Their defense stepped up as well as they held the Buffaloes to only 9 points and under 300 yards of total offense. I've talked about Oregon State a couple times this season, but considering where this program has been the last couple of years, this is quite the turnaround for the Beavers. Well, that's my top 25 after this weekend. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the rankings. Was there a team I had ranked too high or a team that was ranked too low? Or was there a team not even on the list that should have been on here? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section down below. Before you leave, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. I'll be posting college football videos every day during the season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, make sure to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.